I just, um, well, first off, I believed I could win. I had played well up until that point. I was at a semifinal of a huge event, and I knew I was going to have the crowd on my side. And I just wanted to go out there, and I just wanted to compete my hardest. That's really the only thing I can control, and that's what I did. I competed my absolute hardest. I played very well, um, I, and I knew that if I was going to win, it was, it was going to be in a close fashion, I guess you could say, and that's exactly what happened. And I, I sort of, I, I enjoyed the moment. You know, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff was riding on it. It was a lot of big stakes and during, during that match. And I just, uh, I played the right way, went for the right shots during the crucial times. And it paid off for me. And it was a, you know, I'd never beaten the number one player in the world. And I beat the, the number one player in the world who, over the last 16 months, has, has dominated the game, you, you could say. So I have a, you know, beating him is uh, was a, was a, was a big achievement for me. Yeah, no, beating uh, one, three, and five, not bad. Yeah, exactly. I've had uh, I've had those are my three best wins this year for sure, and two of them have come on the road during Clay. Davis Cup Clay. with uh, on clay, which is, uh, is is nice to see. And I sort of I love for the most part I I sort of bring my best level to, to those really big matches and that's what I've done this year. That's why, you know, you play this game to be able to be in those situations and you know, being in Indian Wells have eighteen thousand or how big is that stadium? Sixteen thousand people cheering me on, you know, be an away match in France with ten thousand people cheering against me. Like those are the, it's just a lot of fun. And I try to enjoy it and um, I find you know, I found myself playing uh, playing my best tennis during this time. Yeah, I, I think uh, I have. I mean, I've, I've seen some of that stuff, and um, I, I guess I can see why. I mean, because I have played well, um, you know, you know, so far this year, and I've played the right way. And I think people have seen that, you know, when I'm playing the right way and playing well, I, I'm pretty tough to beat. But it's up to me to to be more consistent at that level, and I'm I know I'm getting I'm getting there. I've, I've always been improving. I still think my best tennis is two years ahead of me, two, three years ahead of me, even though I'm 26 right now. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I want, I want to be that guy for, you know, for American tennis. I don't want to be content at being number 10 in the world right now. I want to keep on climbing. I want to get to nine. I want to get to eight, seven, six, five. I want to get in that top five eventually. From there, if you're at that point, then anything's possible. Absolutely, I do. And... I think nowadays the kids, the, the good high school players, juniors, seniors, I think it seems to me that a lot of them are going to that college route, at least for one year. That's what I've always said. You know, The game nowadays is so physical. I think the average age of players inside the top 100 is 26 years old. It's not like it used to be back in the 90s where guys were at 18, 19 were winning huge events. It's just not how it is anymore. You know, the kids that are coming out of high school, they're not physically strong enough to compete. You know, on a day in day out basis. So for me, going to college is is for for most kids is, is obviously the right choice. You're gonna go there, you're gonna have great competition, you're gonna have great coaching, you're gonna have a great time on top of that. And those are those are years obviously you can't really get back and it, like and just going for one year. If you're gonna go to college and just at least go for one year and see how it is. Well yeah, and I you know, I'm on I've been on Twitter lately and a lot of people are writing me and I I you know I did well at Davis Cup, our team did well at Davis Cup, and and so in turn, it kind of reflects pretty well on the University of Georgia with me playing well over there, and obviously on a, on a bigger level, Bubba winning the biggest golf tournament in the world. So Go dogs. Go dogs. Do you, right. you know Bubba? Yeah, I do. I, I know him pretty well. Really? That, was a, that was a Sunday, it was a good day for you. It was, and it was, <laughs> an, it was, it was uh, something that I couldn't, we couldn't find it on TV over in Monte Carlo either. That's good. So we're we're sitting there, our team after we had won, and we're everybody's got their computers out. It's in the live leaderboard. It's not as good, but it's, it's something. Yeah, I want to win this event, and it's something I I know I can do. Um, I sort of had some tough losses in this event over the years, and I love coming back here, but I can't stand going out early. So I'm going to try to 
obviously rectify that. And I want to stay here as long as possible. This is one of my favorite events. As all y'all can see, it's just a, it's got a different feel than, than most tournaments. It's more quaint. The people are so nice, interacting more. And, you know, I'm staying at a house here. I'm not staying at a hotel. It's just I'm having such a, such a great time. And I want to stay here as long as possible. No, I think I'm handling it well. I think when when I came out of college and I did very I did well very early, I had got I had a lot of attention, a lot of people expected a lot of things. I mean, I think and I although I said it didn't add much pressure on me, I tried tried not to let it affect me. It did. You know, people were expecting big things from me, and it's simply at at that point, 2007, 2008, I just wasn't ready for it. But now, um, you know, I want people to expect a lot of me. So that's uh, once you get up to a you know top 10 in the world, people are going to expect a lot of me. So I like it, I relish it, and I'm going to just go out there and, you know, I try to, I don't think about it too much, but I go out there and uh, just keep playing my game. If I can do that, and hope that people continue to say good things about me. You went to a lot of trouble to come back to this tournament. I know you were originally planning to play Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. like I said, by the hours, maybe. Depending yeah. On, is that depending on how you do it here? Um, no, it looks like I'm not going to play uh, Monte Carlo. It's, uh, it's disappointing. It's such a... I don't know if any of y'all have been to Monte Carlo before. It's the most, one of the most spectacular places I've ever been. So to go back there would, wouldn't be bad at all, obviously. But I also, uh, this season is so long with the Olympics and now that we're doing well in Davis Cup. It's just the schedule is just so crammed. And I have, I'll have very few opportunities to go back home and uh, kind of get on the practice court. I need to get in better shape. If I want to do any sort of damage at... Uh, these next two Grand Slams and these big Master Series events coming up. I need to be in better shape, and I need to work on my game. I need to continue to get better. So that's what we're going to do after this event in Florida. I'm going to, you know, put my head down, go to work, and uh, you know, get my body right, get in very good shape, and go over to Europe and try to, you know, try to try to play well. So yes, it does. I mean, this is a tournament that I, and I hope that I'll play this one every year. I, I love this, love this tournament. So coming back here was in from Monte Carlo was, was an easy choice for me. I mean, some people maybe thought, oh, you should have stayed over there and practiced, rested, and played the big event over there. But I wanted to come here. I enjoyed playing in the States. I just, just like it better here. So we have it on the record that you, you chose Houston over Monte Carlo, right? Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I, I guess. I mean, I could have I could have played both, obviously. Yeah. But I chose uh, I chose Houston over going back over there and, right. and playing. And I would come back here, hope to do well. Um, leave this tournament on a very good note and you know after this tournament go into these practice weeks uh, feeling good about myself. What's your name of the event? Just one of the mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you talk a little bit about the, about the clay court player you've become? Cause, you know, that's not something people may have seen coming. Mm -hmm. But it's, I, I don't people didn't see it coming but for me it's not, I don't feel like it's that surprising because with my serve I, I feel like I can serve uh, or hold serve effectively on any surface, even though it's slow clay or whatever the surface may be. And a lot of times, clay can it can play fast and it can play quick, and the ball, and for the most part, the ball bounces high. And uh, and for me, obviously, that's really good. If I'm hitting forehands right here, shoulder level, that's better than hitting them at my knees. I'm able to get more of the ball. I'm able to put them in the spots where I, where I want to put them. And uh, I've always enjoyed playing on clay, and I think. I think my clay court results in my career haven't been in indicative of how good of a player I, I can be on the surface. Um, I like to just get out of the gates strong on my first match, which, which is Thursday, it looks like. And um, from there, really, it's I'm in a good position where I have a bye. It's, it's only potentially three matches to the final. I've, I've never been out of the quarterfinals of this event, so I just want to focus on my first one. Just, and really, it's, it's cliche, I can't stand to say it, but it's, it really is one match at a time. I, every time I've gotten ahead of myself, I don't look at the draw, I try not to, I tend to sort of stumble a little bit. So I'm just taking one match at a time and ju just play my game. And if, if it doesn't work out for me, I want to, and I want to walk off, if I were to lose, I want to walk off the court playing the right way. And if I do that, that's fine. Um, yeah, I was, I was a little bit worn out. The, I wasn't ready for the humidity of Miami. That's something that I've always, it's always taken me, even though I train in Florida, when, you know, coming from Indian Wells, which is very dry, it's just... Uh, well, play reach in the final, too. Yeah, it's, um, singles and doubles. So, I played a lot of matches, 
and uh, I did not, the match I lost, I did not play my best. It was, uh, it was disappointing, but I think it was sort of a blessing in disguise. It allowed me to rest up quite a bit. I went home, I chilled out, I went fishing, and I got back to work, and um, I, uh, I was ready to go. I was eager and ready to go over in, in, in France for that, for that and, time. And, and, and there was probably a time in your career when losing that match might have eat it, eaten at you a little yeah. bit. And this time you just put it away and said, okay, that's I, I put it away, and I looked at it, and I told myself, hey, it's a blessing in disguise, because a lot of times that happens, and it, and it was. It allowed me to rest up. Had I won that match and won a couple more matches, maybe I wouldn't have been as fit for, uh, for that Davis Cup tie, and we wouldn't be going to Spain in September. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks,